In this episode, we'll be looking at the Py2XE project. The Py2XE project used to be the primary way to create Windows executables from your Python applications. The regular version of Py2XE only supports Python 2.3 to 2.7. There is a new version on the Python packaging index that is called, uh, the version is 0.9.2.0, and it actually supports Python 3.4 as well. We will actually be focusing on the, on the Python 2 version though, because we'll be looking at other Python, uh, binary builders, such as bbfreeze and cxfreeze and pyinstaller, and a lot of those do not support Python 3 very well yet. So we're just gonna look at the same version, uh, binary builder per, uh, binary builder basically so we want to so see how they all react with just one version of Python rather than jumping back and forth between the two But you're welcome to experiment on your own if you want So the first thing we need to do is create something that we want to turn into a binary So that's going to be our, for, our first cho chore Okay, so the first thing I want to do is create a little example program So I'm going to use WX Python because it allows us to create a desktop GUI which is basically a user interface. And this is this is going to be the file. I'm not going to go through this in too much detail. But basically all you need to know is that it's creating a form using a panel and a frame object and then some inside widgets. So basically we have a bunch of labels and then we add, and then we add those labels to our sizer. And we basically just add a lot of controls. So we have labels and text text controls. So if we should if we go ahead and run this you guys can actually see what it's going to look like. Um, we have an indent error. Let's fix that real quick. That's my bad. So we just go up here. Oops. And then we just need to rerun that thing. All right, so here we go. As you can see, we got a bunch of uh, text controls and labels. It didn't quite fit correctly. Anyway, that's that's what it looks like. And now we just want to turn this into an executable. So that's what our next chore will be. As you may have guessed, the next step is to actually create a setup.py file so we have something to, re to make the executable with. So let's go ahead and do that. I actually have one that I've already created. So we'll just go ahead and look at that one. So basically we just uh, import from disutils.core and we import it setup like we did before in our previous episode. And then we import py to xe. Next we have a setup and we tell it that it's going to be a GUI. That's what Windows means basically and where well, you give it the what file that we want. So in this case, example.py, and you notice that it's a list. Now, if you're doing a, a program where it's just outputting to your console, basically a terminal program, then this would actually be called console here instead of uh, Windows. This, of course, only applies to py exe So to actually create our executable, we need to go ahead and open up a command prompt. And I'm going to tell you a little thing that I learned when I've been playing with Py2XE. Sometimes when you create an executable, you'll end up with, with some audible issues. So, for example, um, if you run this, you may get an error but that it doesn't have a certain DLL, like an MSC file or whatever, MSC something something, 9.0 or what have you. Usually it's on your computer, but PyTRX you can't find it. So if you go go ahead and do a search on your computer for that DL it's looking for, you can usually just copy it to your Python installation, and then you'll, you'll notice that like can or C Python. Uh, let me just show you real quick. So go to C Python, go to your folder. There's a DLLs folder in there. A lot of the time you'll get weird errors about stuff like these two, the MSVCP or MSVCR90 DLLs. And we'll be able to find those, so you can actually copy and paste those from other locations into that, and it'll usually pick them up after that. So let's go ahead and do our thing. We just type Python, setup.py, 
space pi 2 xe. And if this works the way it should, we should get a whole bunch of output. So let's give this a go and see what happens. Okay, it's running. It's going to look for modules. You can see it compiling and throwing up a lot of data. And then at the very end, it gives you a whole list of DLLs that, you, that your application may depend on. And in most cases, I don't think it usually actually does depend on most of these, or if it does, they're already included with your applica um, application when you distribute it. Or they're already, loc they're already on the, um, the computer that you're putting it on. So let's go back to Documents, and you'll find that you have a dist and a build folder. You can safely ignore the build folder for now, if you, but you can explore it if you want. The good news are in the dist folder, and in here, you'll notice that you have an example file. This is actually the application file, as you can see. Hopefully, if this works quickly, when you double-click it, it'll run. And ta-da, you just created an executable. And that was super easy. Now, I've got one more thing that I'd like to show you. And it's basically an advanced uh, setup.py file. So let's go ahead and check that out. So you just control O. I have an advanced setup. I just want to show you what this kind of looks like so you have an idea of how to create one that's a little bit more interesting than our previous example. So basically what we have here are a lot of extra stuff. So it includes, don't, we don't actually include anything special. Our excludes, we exclude a lot of stuff that we don't think we need in our particular program. This will not make the executable smaller in the end. So we exclude the email module, the PyWin debugger, dialogs, TCL, basically we're getting rid of TK, TK enter Python's UI user interface libraries, which can add a lot of a lot of extra space. And then we also exclude various DLLs because we don't need like GDK or G object or even the TCL related stuff that are related to TK enter. You can include packages if you want to. And so then we have Py2xe down here in our options. Option, no, Pytorch actually has a lot of options. You can also pass these on the command line, I believe. But anyway, I'll go, let's go through some of these. So, the option stuff, the one I really care about the most, probably, is under um, like compressed or compress it just a little bit. So if you put a zero, you have no compression, and two is the highest, so this will actually help, help with getting it compressed down a little bit. You'll actually compress it to a zip file. The optimize key is, of course, optimization level. Uh, two will reduce the fi size of the folder by about one megabyte. The bundle files key down here uh, bundles DLLs in the zip file or the exe. Uh, there, there are three values, one, two, and three. One will bundle everything, including the Python interpreter. Two will bundle everything but the Python interpreter. And three is don't bundle, or the default, which is what we used earlier. And that's why you, you saw so many files in your, in your output. All these files, if you use one of the other options, it'll try to bundle them all, most of them into a zip file, so you end up with like two files. Or if you do one, it'll try to bundle it all into the exe. And I think that you might get one or two other files with that, but it becomes a lot smaller. However, in my experience, a few years ago, when I was doing that, I found that the exe that it made worked on my machine and a few others, but I also have hit or miss problems with some machines that just would not run the program for, for whatever reason. So I find that one to be a bit unstable. Your mileage may vary. Maybe you'll get lucky and it'll just work for you. but. Just an FYI. Anyway, at this point, you should know enough to get started using the Py2xe module yourself. I recommend trying it out on something small first, and then trying it with other bigger programs. And then, when you get really ambitious, you can start trying out other binary builders like BBFreeze or CXFreeze. And we're actually going to be looking at those in some of our future episodes. So, I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for watching.